All right. I thought it would be close, but it's not. What? Oh. All right. The, the distance from um, to Hong Kong versus to Tokyo, but uh, Hong Kong is way farther. Like 20% farther away. Huh. Which to me on a map doesn't look that like that much of a difference, but. I think I've come to learn that if, if you're in the US, Perth, Australia is basically the farthest spot away that anybody can be in the US. Can get? Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Perth, uh, Australia. Yeah, I've never been to Australia, so. The, and Perth is on the west side of Australia. So you have to go okay. to Australia, but then you have to <laughs> go across the entire country. Yeah, they have a lot of radio telescopes out in that part of Australia. That's, that's, that's my right. knowledge of it. Yeah. I bet they have a lot of telescopes, period. Yeah, it could be. The radio <laughs> telescopes are the powerful ones, though. You can see all the aliens with them. I like that. All right. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. It's good to see everybody. Um, and we haven't seen each other for about a week. Or wait, a month, I mean? Month, yeah. <laughs> month. It feels <laughs> yeah. like it's been... Whatever. It feels longer than a week, but yeah. It is longer than a week. Um, I guess maybe I'd like to, to put Elizabeth a little bit on the spot and just see how Fosse went. I know you'll probably talk about it in a number of meetings today, but um, I think you were our representative there. So you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure, sure. It was a really good conference. It's a brand new conference for those who don't know about that. It's, I think, um, run by the Software Freedom Conservancy. Conservancy. Yeah. So um, it was the first year they did it in Portland, Oregon, and it was small, like 285 people there, but um, really great. Uh, talked a lot <laughs> about chaos. And um, yeah, it was funny there because it's um, the crowd there is like less commercial, less, uh, you know, corporate. It's much more of like, yeah, the uh, the privacy and the um, the, the hardcore open source folks. So um, a lot of folks hadn't heard of chaos. So that was really great to, to introduce chaos to everyone. Um, I gave a talk with Justin Flory um, on onboarding onto I did my chaos, obviously, and um, Justin is the community manager for Fedora. So Justin, who's also been in chaos as well, but so we did a double um, talk together. And when I asked at the beginning of the talk, who had heard of chaos? Almost everyone in the room had by that point because I was there and Don was there and Georg was there and um, a bunch of uh, Sophia was there. So there were a bunch of us floating around with chaos and shirts a, talking about a chaos. lot of chatty people too that are willing yeah. to talk. Which yeah, is yeah, good. Yeah. So it was, it was really great. I, I talked about the metrics models group a lot, a lot, lot, because that seems to be kind of, you know, where we've evolved as a project from the individual metrics. And now, like, this is kind of the, the heart of the project right now and the meat of it. Um, and really getting those context user groups, um, you know, working with those to figure out what what do we need to, what are we missing and how can we put these metrics together? So, yeah, so it was wonderful. And um, there, uh, we're gonna, well, I don't know if we're gonna do it for sure, but we were talking about maybe proposing the chaos track next year with them. They are super interested in working with us on some level. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. What would that be like? Um, well, it could be anything from like going over, you know, developing of metrics to how to use the software. Okay. We have a few questions from people who are kind of struggling a little with using um, both Augur and Grimoire Lab. I got some questions. So, um, so yeah, I think there's still work to be done with just getting people using the software that we have. Okay. So I think that would be um, one. And then also just, you know, general community health. Um, there, there was a community track there. And so there was, you know, a little bit of overlap of just like inclusivity and, you know, dealing with different you know, um, communities from all over and, and things like that. So yeah, Garrick, Garrick actually sponsored the, uh, or organized the DEI track. He did. Yeah. 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 So, um, so it was really, it was really, really good conference. I had a great time and met a lot of, um, a lot of new faces. So that was awesome. That's awesome. I had, also, it's funny. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to add one more thing. So, and Anita Sarma was there and I know yeah. some um, she had a student um, from China that was doing a research project. So we were kind of helping try to fo 
funnel. I, I hope he, he's able, he lives on the West Coast though, so I don't know that he's gonna be able to join these meetings because they're super early for them. Um, but I was trying to encourage him to just to get to know us and you know, some Anita of our- Anita joined the badging meeting yesterday. Yeah, she was there. Oh, Anita did? Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah. So anyway, that's it. That's awesome. I I was gonna. What I was gonna say is, I've heard independently from like you and other people that there was a lot of talk about chaos, which was great. Just that it came up a lot, which yeah, I was happy I to hear. And all good. I hope. <laughs> like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it was all good. Sucks, <laughs> that was awesome. Um, well, I guess that that's actually a good segue into a couple different things. So um, I do want to just point out there are a couple metric models that have um, been started from the science uh, context working group or context group. So again, we have kind of three different context groups with respect to our metrics models and the one of the metrics or gosh one of the context working groups ah. is crash <laughs> brain is a corporate ospos um another context group is university ospos and a third is uh scientific software and so the two that you're looking at here are from the scientific software context group melissa had brought these two forward and so I just wanted to kind of put this on um, people's radar that this is happening and we're starting to take a look at, at these two particular metric models. I don't know that we need to do much work at the moment right here, because um, I think we're still kind of in the process of defining those user stories and identifying the metrics that are in that metrics model. But I think just as, as we continue to evolve these of the science, context working group, you'll see these two metrics models show up. One of the things that I did wonder about is um, in the writing of some of these metrics models, um, like there, there is some specificity, for example, sometimes. So for example, scientific project sustainability versus just general project sustainability and how, from a metrics model perspective, we might want to think about having models that are quite specific to a context or metric models that are more general and could be applied in different contexts. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think from a, the, the key thing is for a lot of the metrics models, I think we can instrument what the values are to this particular domain or context. I also think there are some metrics, for example, in scientific open source software that wouldn't be relevant for corporatized open source in terms of determining the health. Um, so it wouldn't, it would be more than parameters. So I, yeah, I, I agree with, I guess, I don't know if you're proposing, but I, I agree that there are, there are some domain level distinctions where there are things I would look at in the scientific open source domain that I would not look at in the corporatized domain to make an estimate of health. Is there a way to maybe have, um, and this this is something we've not done before. I don't know how it would work really, but um, we would have like maybe like the core metrics model of things that like probably everybody cares about, and then mm -hmm. add on another level on top of um, this. Plus, then if you are also in a scientific uh, capacity, here are things that you would be specific to you. Here's specific for corporate, here's specific universities. So it's like this core, but then there's like spokes off of it or like layers on top or something like that. I don't know. So like a modular conceptualization of these differences. I think yeah, or you could start with like the core that, you know, everybody cares about, most people care about. And then like the next step is to also then add on or, or add on yeah. this extra layer of specificity, as Matt said so mm -hmm. eloquently. Which is a really hard word early in the morning. Does does core mean the starter model or or something else in particular? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Oh. I, don't I think maybe maybe we could like for this one, it's it's around project sustainability. So maybe there's a core project sustainability. Like regardless of your context, these are the things that maybe are common across. And then there's that like extra. I don't know. Just a thought. So I'm sorry. I had a 
dog issue like over my shoulder <laughs> <laughs> so um, i got chickens if you want to see the chickens <laughs> but they're very very peaceful and quiet i am so sorry um so was the i, I was trying to listen while i was <laughs> doing <laughs> it. um but was it to to have more general metrics models and perhaps provide a section that would provide some specificity for the context groups or no did yeah, I miss it, it was my thought was just like we have this core of um kind of like how we have a common metrics group that like works on things that a lot of people care about so you would for sustainability for instance you would have like this core metrics of like maybe two or three that everybody's yep. going to probably care about and then there's like another level on top that's like gotcha. tailored to the where would we put that other level would it be in here okay i don't know if it's a separate thing that you just like plug the two together to make your whole like a a, a mega <laughs> a mega metrics model can we have that i don't know mm. i don't know just a thought yeah i i've made a comment in the text i think it's it's um there are dimensions that i consider in these different domains that are and i so what you're suggesting, Elizabeth, I think is like a modularity, like there's a core. These are the things that we care about across all the domains. And then each domain may have some dimensions that are also important to it. So I, I like I like that. I would prefer to keep these uh, general, like instead of scientific project sustainability, it would just be project sustainability as an example, because I do think that there's an interest from corporate OSPOs and from university aspos about project sustainability but then to your point elizabeth and sean um that somewhere in here we could provide some of that specificity so sean like if you're in a scientific software community here are a few things you might want to think about beyond what's provided in this model yeah, i mean the easiest way to do it is to keep it all in this doc and then maybe just add a section around contexts i guess as opposed to like a whole other doc that would have to connect somehow, but then that means this is going to get pretty long and like as we add contexts. Are we going to have to add it in every single metrics model that we have, you know, if we yeah. go into like environmental software or you know, financial like whatever it happens to be I don't know. I don't know how scalable that is. I mean technically we need something that would let us easily go the core and then if I click a scientific button or something and I see the additional or other things that are related to the scientific domain for this metric model I'm sure things like that exist but we haven't worked with them ourselves yet yeah unless it's like we use the tagging system mm -hmm. somehow and like link I don't, I don't know it's way too early in the morning to solve this yeah I, I was gonna say maybe this is food for thought yeah yeah let's uh I mean, I think this is I thank you for the feedback. I think maybe and we will solve this because we always do. But um, yeah, so that's that's good. OK. Um, all right, cool. Thank you. I just wanted to bring these to your attention. Um, you I'm going to put you on the spot just a little bit. So with respect to compass updates and how things are going there, um, I did want to let you know that I had kind of shared the not kind of, but I had shared the site and the repo with folks from GitHub. They were asking about uh, projects that have deployed chaos software uh, through like dashboards and interfaces. So I was talking to some folks at GitHub just about Compass as well, not to mention Augur. And they were already familiar with Augur and Grimoire Lab. So I just, I wanted to point that out to you. And I know that there were a couple conversations going on in the Slack channel regarding Compass as well, and just kind of seeing how things are going. Yep, yep. Actually, we have um, a lot of work done in in the in the Compass, especially about Compass Lab. As you know, that like uh, two months ago, we demoed the first version of the of the Compass Lab uh, together with the Starter Health Metrics model that's created by our Compass members together, but the, in the next step, uh, as I mentioned, we would like to uh, create the metrics models with the independent metrics um, in the Compass Lab instead of just uh, deploy it into the Compass Lab and uh, make some validation. So, which means uh, everyone uh, who got 
a compass count, uh, which has a access right to create this matrix model, we would select uh, data site and uh, matrix site uh, and uh, compose a new matrix model. Uh, as I mentioned, we have more than 70, more than 70 metrics already supported in Compass, which originated from chaos. So right now the backend designing work is, uh, is almost finished and the, the implementation work uh, just started this week. So hopefully two, two weeks later, maybe we can show our first version of this Compass Live to all of you. And uh, yeah, in, in that case, uh, I would like to give all of us from Chaos members uh, uh, some special count who has the right to uh, create uh, metrics models independently or collaborated with each other. So Yahoo, you had, are these in Compass Live, I was thinking about this, are these models that can be, um, so they're, they're models that can be built by individuals bringing together different metrics that they choose to define. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if you remember correctly, uh, I have at once uh, some some survey, some kind of survey on our chaos, uh, that's sheet, that's documentations to, you. to yep. let you tell us uh, which metrics it's got highest priority to be implemented as an independent metric model in Compass. That's what used, to, uh, that uh, is intended uh, used by uh, Compass Live. This so, is what you're talking about? Exactly. Yep. So right now the, the backend work, I mean, including this independent metrics model component uh, development work, uh, it's already started. So Gotcha. Mm. But then these metrics would become available to yeah. be drawn together yeah. in different models. Yeah. Anyone who wants to create a new metrics model with the different metrics uh, in chaos, they can select from Compass and uh, and use the different uh, data site to verify it. Just to make some selection. Yeah. Like, yeah. You buy things on eBay. So then a question, a follow up question I have, and I. I seem to recall this conversation from earlier, but if if somebody deploys a new metric model, for example, and they bring together, say, whatever, four or five different metrics that are here on this list, the, mm -hmm. the weighting of those metrics, how is that handled on the compass side? Because I know that there's kind of an aggregate that's provided. Uh, first, uh, all the metrics would be available, uh, at least the current uh, what I list on these documentations uh, as a as a component, and how to aggregate uh, those metrics into a new metrics model. We provide some default uh, algorithm, okay. and uh, and uh, of course you can provide some 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 other new algorithm to calculate uh, it. Uh, but uh, that's really depends on your your requirement. But basically, okay. we provide some default uh, weight, default threshold. Of course, both threshold and weight are, are configurable, and um, and we provide some default algorithm to got the final metric score. But that's also as uh, just a pro provide as a default solution. If you got any new solutions for the final matrix model uh, calculation algorithm, uh, you can tell us or you can implement by yourself. We provide such a way on, on that web handling. Okay. Mm. I seem to wasn't I seem to recall you saying that allowing people to kind of modify the weights of the metrics was really computationally expensive. <laughs> that was not something you were going to provide. <laughs> But is it um, that's why we only could uh, at the first phase when it's de deployed on the compass we would provide some some um, you know specific count uh, i see, for, I see. For, for so people limiting from that. Chaos. yeah okay just for a specific uh, smaller subset of people not just the yeah, yeah. planet okay yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, great. Uh, does anybody have questions for Yahui on how things are going? I guess my question would be, Yahui, what else do you need, like kind of on here? I've been, I had been going through here. Do you want me to continue to con uh, go through here? Uh, about Compass Lab, that's all. Uh, I would like to share, in, maybe in the future, two weeks, two weeks later, uh, we could provide as a demo presentation uh, because uh, we have doing a lot of work on the designing phase. So finally, we got into uh, step into the implementation phase this week. That'd be great. Love yeah. to have you yeah. do that. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, and the other things about um, um, uh, sustainability of the developers uh, that I demoed in last meeting about developer uh, model. Um, we are still working on that um, because we got a lot of feedback from all of you in, in the last meeting. We also got a lot of feedbacks from other friends in China. And um, so finally, we would provide a, fi a final aggregated uh, developer a uh, developer model including the profile i noticed that in the last metrics model you show with us about scientist scientist uh, model that's uh, mentioned something about admin or leadership in the in the community actually we have solved that uh, somehow to solve that issue or problem how to identify the leadership role based on the GitHub actions. Uh, so uh, we would like to demo that in, maybe in the next meeting. Well, was leadership hard? Yeah. Isn't it just it's, a social network measure, really? Maybe, I don't know, but but for my understanding, it's, um, you know, pro play the admin, some admin actions, no matter from the issue, pull request, or, or code contributions, they could mm -hmm. uh, distinguish that actions yeah yeah i mean yeah okay i'm yeah. surprised that was difficult but so yeah that's all i have done in the in the last months i haven't ten meeting for over one month i know so about that yeah it's been a while <laughs> <laughs> this is why i'm asking for the update because it's been a while right. since we've talked so this is good i don't know if in us but in china actually most of people uh because of a lot of children, uh, you know, on the on the summer vacation, so a lot of people have to accompany their children. So the same whole year. environment is more like yeah. a holiday in China. Yeah, no, the U.S. has similar challenges in the summer. <laughs> and for we're sure. ready to hit August, which is in Europe, as we all know. <laughs> all <laughs> which uh, yeah, all the Europeans disappear for August. All right. Well, thank you for the update, Yahui. That was great. Yeah. Um, I would like to, to bring this up. This was one that we had talked about prior. I do think this is nearly ready to go, if not ready to go. Um, there was one question that you had, Elizabeth, from kind of our last meeting zone, which was, is this just about dependencies or is this also about um, do you remember this question? <laughs> or is it also just about projects that, so basically this is business readiness of an open source project. And you had said, is this just about dependencies or is this also about say something like just using WordPress? You know what I mean? Like it's not really a dependency. It's just a piece of open source software that we're using in our project. Yeah, I don't remember this question at all. <laughs> well, that was your question. It was a fine question. <laughs> awesome question. What are you talking yeah, about? So Oh, I had, I had I just responded. Know. I think it's about both the way I had understood it. So it could be the business readiness of a dependency or okay, or it could also be the use of a piece of software that's just, you know, kind of a piece of software by itself. Yes. So yes. I had tried to get, get, get that into the why it matters part. It seems like this. that's been resolved then for sure. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I could have just said resolved and... <laughs> Like, I, great. I, I don't I, no, no recollection of this at all so yeah you're good. good so I think we've been through this um several times right now I think this was something that Vinod had led if you recall if you'd like to add yourself as a contributor please feel free I think anybody on this call um is certainly 
a contributor. So, or if you'd like to add yourself, just put yourself in the minutes and I can add it here as well. So either way is all good. And then it's just ready to ship. Yeah, I think so. And you know, our, our process for uh, metrics models is considerably simpler just because they do move a little bit. Um, you know what I mean? Like it versus metrics. So I think we're good to go here. Awesome. Okay. I think the only, my only hesitation with this, if anybody cares, is we usually like to keep metrics models at a fairly limited set of metrics. This does have eight metrics associated with it. Yeah. They're, they're, these are like, um, a lot of these metrics are though, um, sort of derivatives of each other uh, from the same data. So for example, all of the licensed ones really are just different cuts of the same data. Um, Fair. And bus factor and elephant factor, I think, are different cuts of very similar data. Essentially, it's just the organizational affiliation of a contributor that changes the basically the elephant factor. Like if um, I'm the committer, and if I change my organizational affiliation, then my commits in the future change to that new organizational affiliation, which alters the elephant factor. But it's, I mean, there's, um, so these are, I guess what I'm saying is unlike some of the other ones where we've had more metrics than we prefer, th these aren't more metrics that make you think a lot of different ways. They're essentially different slices of exactly the same data in a couple of cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a... And Good answer. And kind of looking at these two, these all seem like they are pretty easily attainable through things like Augur. Like you already yeah. have access to every one of these through trace data. Yeah. Test coverage remains, I mean, there's test cover test coverage is a largely aspirational metric. It's not one that's easily deployed across a wide range of repositories. Um, there's a lot of language specific considerations for test coverage checking. Um, but that's been the case from the beginning. Um, and I don't think we're going to solve it. So it's a useful metric, but it's also one that's hard to get to. Okay. Yeah. And as we, I think, as we say in a lot of these metrics models, like here, are the, here are in this case, eight, <laughs> like pick and choose which ones are important to you, but this is kind of the base we set out. And to your point, Sean, maybe this one's a little tricky to get to, but if somebody wants to take the time. Yeah. And fair enough. Exactly. Okay. All right. Great. Exactly. Yep. 100% on board with that idea. All right. Elizabeth, I think I, I already I put that up for you because I think you can, as our WordPress person, <laughs> kind of help carry that <laughs> forward. Our, yeah, that's our resident WordPresser. <laughs> fresh, it's freshly WordPress juice. Uh, I just always but say, it, like, go, like, and then it goes into the WordPress, like, void, and it just <laughs> shows up on the website. <laughs> Magic is what it is. Um, you're welcome. No, you're, you're, thank that. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The the last thing I had, and you know, I'm putting you on the spot, and if you have not done this, that's completely okay. <laughs> so it's, I just wanted yeah. to say you were with this. Yeah, actually, I, I I'm still uh, as I mentioned, uh, I, I'm I'm got um, full time working on a like, small metrics model. Actually, it's yep. because the whole contributor things or developer things, it's it's quite complicated. Because as I mentioned earlier in the last meeting, we we would like to set up the full profile uh, for the developers from different dimensions, uh, like um, from the uh, ecosystem or leadership. Uh, that's that's perspective view or from the uh, contribute frequency and uh, from the uh, contribution type so all those <laughs> dimensions make makes us to have to create a solid and full view of the uh, contributors profile is quite complicated so we are still working on that, on that but uh, hopefully uh, in the next meeting we, we would more or less to show that how it's going on. Do you want to talk through any of those complications? I know that, and I, the reason I asked this is because Sean has done, mm -hmm. he does a lot of work in this space and might have some insights. Yeah, sure. Because uh, because I, I talked to Liang from Nanjing University, we, we are preparing some documentation in English. 
to make a good communication with all of you in uh, from chaos so maybe in uh, next week we can provide document okay to, to give a uh, you know more detailed description about uh, this is related to sustaining contributors metrics in related to to the sustainability contributors yeah. metrics and mm -hmm. and all the <laughs> contributor profiles to yeah to yeah <laughs> yeah as i mentioned you know the main actions happened in github um how to dis distinguish those uh, really to uh, decide uh, how to how to how, how to uh, distinguish those people from all those of these developers from one one communities or project is it how to distinguish people within a project is that a challenge yeah yeah quite big challenge because uh, <clears throat> you know we we use the um, um email suffix that's the really uh, easy, easiest way to distinguish the people from which corporation but uh, you know uh, not all the people use their uh, you know uh, corporation email account so uh, except for that and if this member is a it's a it's a call member or admin uh, role in from the communities how to uh, you know it's really hard to to get those data because which is private uh, in the from from the pub, uh, from the public uh, api you cannot get that so you have to distinguish those data from the daily uh, actions no matter in issue request and could 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 commit uh, for example some people would uh, would uh, assign some issue to other people which means he must uh, be admin uh, in this project which means we have to do, <laughs> uh, read those data from the normal actions and also who has right to merge the data who has right to co push the code directly to the project they're all the other means so all those things behind some you know uh, contribution actions no matter from issue pull request or code commit that's only from the github uh, that so sources but also we have some other data sources like slack like twitter how, how to distinguish that that's all the questions we haven't solved yet John, have you been through this with like the work? Yeah. Red Hat? yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've been through it and the only times that I've had what I think are really good resolutions of organizations are when I'm inside the walls of that organization and I have their list of all the emails that a person uses. Um, Augur, like if, a, so in the case of Augur, we can, like if somebody uses their corporate email one time, we can alias all of the other emails associated with that same user together however that doesn't what that doesn't give us are the start dates and end dates for a particular contributor for a particular organization um, because that information is only known to that organization and that's that's where the organizational affiliation pieces are um, they're, they're difficult if a person doesn't accurately declare their affiliation or if you don't have the internal list of emails associated with people who are contributing and the bounding dates does that make sense like it's yeah. a sticky problem it's a it's a pretty sticky problem yep especially as you mentioned some people will change their um your organization's role uh, you know change your job to another uh companies they will change their account yeah. but how to how to you know uh, know that in time yeah exactly no it's it's um and people i mean i think increasingly open source contributors uh here are they don't want to be associated with an organization they want to be viewed as free agents and so the the in, there's an almost an, there's a growing i would say intentionality 
of ambiguating my organizational affiliation when I'm mm -hmm. contributing to open source. So the, I think the problem is becoming more challenging as time passes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, it, it, so I guess I acknowledge. I guess acknowledging. Yeah, yep, no. That's hard. <laughs> yeah, no. I, well, I was gonna say it sounds like Yahui and Leon will be like kind of posting a document maybe in a week to Slack. Yahui, yeah, where you would put it. Yeah, I would like to show that about thinking about solutions we have. Yeah. Yep. We, we, and we then Sean, I yep. bet you would sure. be like a perfect candidate to take a look at that. No. I'm just because it sounds perfect yeah no i'm i will keep an eye i'll keep an eye out for that document i'm i'm kind of excited to see perhaps, perhaps he who he has determined <laughs> you, perhaps who he has unlocked the magic key yeah that, maybe it's uh, done and you yeah, just <laughs> yeah oh oh yeah that should work i was that was dumb <laughs> hope so i will i i would like to share share that <laughs> All right, well, that's actually uh, really good news that comes out of this discussion. So uh, let's see. Thank you for that. Um, so then we had a one question before we wrap up here from Victor in the chat that I'd like to bring forward. I'll put it in the minutes here. Um, any documentation, a talk or a blog on how to use a model to produce a high level report for for management um so victor i think you have kind of hit on an issue that has come up in our corporate ospo context group as well as our university ospo working group and so the question is is a lot of uh upper management or executives don't want to see a lot of the detailed metrics that are provided by things you they just don't want to see the full set of numbers in front of them so how to roll that up into a report that's useful i think is a question that we're working on at the moment um elizabeth yeah. you have responded there as well was, was that your yeah. question victor yeah i've seen that yeah what elizabeth provided is a, yes helpful uh, information so uh, basically what i've seen uh, because I attend a lot of different uh, open source community events. Yeah. Um, so a lot of a tendency is to, uh, for, for people who has not digged so deep into the matrix, uh, is tend to come up with uh, things like creating a, a, like a, a model to uh, just, just kind of a high level things to do to reach a certain either a maturity model or whatever stage uh, open source community need to be. So uh, matrix model definitely is a, a matrix, chaos matrix definitely is awesome to go deeper that nobody else I think has gone as deep. Um, so it'd be great to uh, go back up from, so we're, from, the, from the foundation, how to use this detailed matrix to summarize and go back to, to, to measure those, um, uh, level of maturity, whatever it is, uh, you know, in a, um, so that, that can be consumed uh, easier by the uh, by the upper management. Because usually, upper management in in corporations tend to want to read one page things, right, rather than lots of matrix. So yes, and let me bring something up here. So when you mention metrics model, or wait, when you mention maturity models, if I can click on that, we're kind of actually going this route. So this is an example, Victor, from the University OSPO context group. And don't please don't look at, this is a work in progress at the moment. So don't worry about this bottom set of boxes here. But across the top set, this was a set of goals that University OSPOs are kind of focusing on. Again, university context, not corporate context. So how to identify open source as connected to research excellence, how to identify open sources connected to research translation and so on and so forth down the list. 
And then within each one of these goals at the top or functions across the top, we would have kind of smaller sets of practices that an OSPO can do. And then within each one of these practices, for example, so like if I was to pick that box in the, the one that I highlighted right there, like there would be, oops, let me pick one. There would ultimately be metrics and metrics models that would help speak to that. So we are kind of going, the I think the way that you're talking about, so we're trying to roll the specific metrics and metrics models up into some particular objective that hits a particular practice that would speak to a particular goal. Does that make sense? Yeah, this definitely, this is great. Yeah, if this same thing can be available in the corporate world, it'll be, yes. I think it'll be very useful. Yeah. And one of the effort I'm sharing another link I'm involved in um, is so-called platform maturity model being worked on uh, in a CNCF organization. Okay. If you if you scroll down to uh, scroll down to the um, there's a there's a table. Um, yeah, yeah, scroll, keep on going. Okay. Yeah. Um, Where? Keep going? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah okay. yes, one. Yeah. So this table, um, so I think this group is doing a great job. Um, the, the, the team that's been building this initially um, is instead of just relying, you know, common knowledge to come up with matrix, this group really go deep into what matrix need to be measured in when it comes to measure, uh, um, like success of a platform. So, um, so I think this could be, I guess, with chaos, I guess maybe a two week. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe like from from your perspective, anything else? Any additional matrix need to be added? I think that'll be interesting. This is great. Um, I have not seen this, and actually, it's interesting because is this this is a work in progress? I'm guessing. Yeah, there's actually there, there's actually a meeting, believe it or not, today at eleven o'clock. Um, that's going to be going into really, I think, the final review of the basically the matrix. Can you put that like the details yeah. of that here? Yeah, or... let me let me put the invite uh, here. Okay, and then it's funny because the I had been you know this thing that I showed you, the maturity model, I had actually been basing the corporate one off of work that uh, Chris Anacek had done, which is very aligned, I'm sure, with the CNCF. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> so it, we may be kind of focusing on, hmm. on similar things. So that's that's good. Um, but yes, I. But I mean, I think in in the in the open source world, in outside of chaos, this is really the only one I have seen that's going into deep into the actual matrix, which is relevant. Yeah. So yeah. No, the CNC. I mean, CNCF, especially Kubernetes. That's you know. That that uh, dashboard they have. Yeah, because well, a lot of time what happened is the um, there's tendency, as I said, to, to just come up with something uh, with mm -hmm. general knowledge about what to need to be measured. Uh, this go try to go more abstract level to mm -hmm. go into what matters. Um, so yeah, I think this will be helpful. Let me see. Uh, do I have that? Uh, so are these? Would I read this like this investment adoption? user experience backlog. I mean, is that, are these the, maybe I'll just have to read it and like kind of see how it would map to the models that we've been putting together. Yeah, so this is more, um, well, that's the thing. So I, I, um, so defining a material model is really hard because it's yeah. uh, uh, how to uh, really, because e each factor may not reach the same level at the same time, right? So one thing that this team has been, the original uh, author of this, model I like is uh, they, the factor they, um, uh, each factor doesn't have to reach a particular level at the same time. So it's kind of independent. So um, yeah, and, and so how to, um, uh, yeah, how to effectively, um, uh, sorry, I forgot, I forgot what I'm gonna say. Anyway, uh, I have posted that community, um, Yep, I got event. it. Uh, yeah, you can join today at uh, that's uh, uh, yeah the, the the main person is in uh, lady she's in uh, UK, so okay. it's it's eleven eleven um I think it's eleven a.m. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be one at least one hour maybe two hour. So yeah, so this might be the final um, meeting to to confirm this. I'll, so I, think, I would I'll join if I can. Um, yeah. I will if I can't. I will say one thing, one piece of feedback that we got 
with respect to the terminology maturity model is that it may not be an appropriate phrase in that not every, in this case, a university OSPO cares about research translation, for example. And so a maturity model would imply that every organization should strive to, for each of these things and that they should develop metrics and metrics models to support each one of those things. And one of the feedback pieces of feedback that we got in the corporate OSPO context working group that maturity models sometimes kind of imply that every OSPO needs to be working towards these things, when in fact, every OSPO is probably at very different uh, stages of growth or different um, hopes of things they want to achieve. And not everybody wants to do everything. That's all. Actually, that's an interesting uh, because I, uh, the the there's been debate on uh, in that platform meeting about uh, a choice of between calling it maturity model versus maturity principle. Uh, this way, we don't have to say you have to. Yeah, you, know, you can kind of pick what is important to you as a as an org. If you see the the um, the actual factors uh, the using that in that model, um, it's not um, something that you have to do this technology. You have to you know increase. It's more of a in in a in a principle way. Like if you follow the principle, uh, regardless of what technology you use, it, it might be there. You may get there. Um, that's Got that's it. yeah. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that um, that link. And now I'm gonna actually put it in the minutes for people. Okay, great. All right, folks, we're at the end of time. Look at that. Oh, how about that? Yeah. We'll see y'all in see y'all in two weeks. Yeah, we'll see y'all in two weeks. Yeah. Uh and we'll like we'll hope we'll connect on Slack and maybe if you have a presentation to do in two weeks, I'll just confirm that. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Great. Thanks everybody.